Welcome to Algebra, Graphing Linear Inequalities. Up to now, all the solutions have been about the points on a line as solutions to a function. In this lesson, we'll look at points in the regions above or below a line as well. Let's check it out. Here are the key aspects of graphing linear inequalities. You will continue to graph lines in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, as you've learned previously. You will still solve for y when converting from standard form, ax plus by equals c, to slope-intercept form. You will use the inequality symbols, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, instead of the equal sign. Another key difference is drawing either a solid or a dashed line, as well as shading above or below the line. You will need to recognize graphs that do not have the correct line style, solid or dashed, or are shaded in the wrong region. The next key issue is flipping or reversing the inequality symbol when dividing by a negative value in the final step of the conversion process. Finally, you will need to recognize if a point anywhere on the graph is in the solution set, in the shaded region, or on a solid line. The symbolism used when graphing inequalities is important to understand. For line styles, we use a dashed line for greater than and less than symbols, and a solid line for greater than or equal to and less than or equal to symbols. For shading, we shade below the line for less than and less than or equal to symbols, and above the line for greater than and greater than or equal to symbols. Here is an example of an inequality and its graph. y is less than x plus 2. Notice it is in slope-intercept form, except it has the less than symbol instead of the equal sign. The slope, the coefficient value of x, is 1 which means a rise of 1 and a run of 1. The y-intercept is 2, and so the line on the graph has a slope of 1 over 1 passing through the y-axis at 2. The line is also dashed, since the inequality symbol does not include the equal sign. Let's look at some possible points on this graph and determine if they are in the solution set. First, let's consider the point negative 3, 2. We plug it into our inequality, and we end up with 2 less than negative 1. This is not a correct statement, therefore this point is not in the solution set. And you can see that it is outside of the shaded region. We pick another point, 1, 3, and we plug it in and work it through, and we get 3 less than 3. This is still not a correct statement. 3 is clearly not less than 3. And you can see that this point is on the dashed line, which means it is not in the solution set. This is not correct. We pick another point on the dashed line, negative 4, negative 2, work it through, and we get another statement that is not correct. This is not in the solution set. We finally pick a point inside the shaded region, 2, negative 2. Plug it in, work it through, and we end up with negative 2 less than 4. And this is a correct statement. Therefore, this point is in the solution set for this inequality. Let's try this one. To graph it, we locate the y-intercept at negative 3 according to the inequality, and then work up 2 and over 1 a few times, and finally draw the line. Should it be solid or dashed? How do you know? Well, because it is greater than, does not include the equal sign, it is a dashed line. Which side of the line should be shaded? And how do you know? Well, it should be shaded above because of the greater than symbol. Let's try the point negative 3, 2. We plug it into the inequality, work it through, and end up with 2 greater than negative 9. This is a correct statement, so this point is in the solution set for this inequality. We pick another point that's on the dashed line, 3, 3, Plug it in, work it through, and we end up with 3 greater than 3. That is not a correct statement. This is not part of the solution set for this inequality. Another point outside of the shaded region plugs in 2, negative 2, and we get negative 2 greater than 1. That is not a correct statement. So this is not in the solution set for the inequality. 
Let's try this one. y less than or equal to 1 over 2x plus 1. We locate 1 on the y-axis. We do the slope 1 over 2 a few times. You can even go backwards. And we decide which line to do. Is this going to be solid or dashed? It's going to be solid because it includes less than or equal to. Which side do we shade? We go below because it's less than. We pick a point, 4, 3. Now this is on the solid line, so it should work. We plug in the numbers, and we end up with 3 less than or equal to 3. This is a correct solution. This point is in the solution set for this inequality. Let's try another point. Negative 2, 2 is outside of the shaded region, so this should not work. If we plug it through and get the final answer, we get 2 less than or equal to 0. That is not a correct statement, so this is not a point that solves the inequality. Another point that's inside the shaded region, 2, negative 2, should work. We plug it in and work it through, and we get negative 2 less than or equal to 2. This is a correct statement, so this point is in the solution set for this inequality. Let's try this one. We locate 3 on the y-axis. We go down 1 and over 2 according to the slope. You can even go backwards. We decide the line is going to be solid, and we're going to fill in below the line because of the less than. We pick a point, 2, 4, which is outside the shaded region. We plug it in, and this should not work, and indeed that is right. 4 is not less than or equal to 2, so this is an incorrect statement. 2, 4 is not in the solution set for this inequality. We pick another point that's on the line, negative 2, 4, and since the line is solid, this means this point should work. We plug in the numbers. We get 4 less than or equal to 4. This is a correct solution. Pick another point that's actually in the shaded region, 2, 0. Plug it in, and it also works out. 0 is less than or equal to 2. Now, from an inequality in standard form, as you see this one, 2x plus 3y less than 6, we must first convert to slope-intercept form. We follow the same procedure as before, moving the x term over, and we divide all parts by 3, and we get y is less than 2 minus 2 over 3x. We rearrange into slope-intercept form. We locate the 2 on the y-axis. We go down 2 over 3. You can even go backwards. And we decide that we put a dashed line because of the less than symbol. And we shade below because it is less than. Here is an equation, 2x minus 3y less than or equal to 6. And if you look carefully, the y term has a negative 3 as the coefficient, which means we're going to end up dividing by negative 3. And this brings up the rule that you always reverse the inequality when you divide by a negative number during the process. We move the 2x over, and we end up with negative 3y less than or equal to 6 minus 2x. We divide all sides by negative 3, which means we reverse the inequality, and we get y greater than or equal to negative 2 plus 2 over 3x. We rearrange into slope-intercept form y greater than or equal to 2 over 3x minus 2. We locate the point at negative 2. We go up 2 and over 3, even go backwards, and we draw a solid line because the greater than or equal to symbol contains equals. And we're going to shade above the line because it's greater than. Let's graph one more. Negative 4x minus 12y less than 24. Now, if you're thinking here, we're going to end up reversing this, you are correct, because the y term has a negative coefficient. We divide all parts by negative 12. We end up with y greater than negative 2 minus 1 over 3x. Rearrange into slope-intercept form. Locate the negative 2. Go down 1 over 3. Even go backwards. Draw a dashed line. And we shade above the region because it's greater than. Thank <laughs> you.